To you, Mkolo, I write this letter. Our family only has one remaining photo of you. I would have loved to tell the story with your face and your voice all over it, but I sadly cannot. They told me you loved playing piano. I've never known you, but you've always been with me. From long before I can remember, I used to ask about you, want to have a conversation with you. I'd ask so many questions about you and my mother would only have half the answers. That's why I've created an idea of who I think you would have been. I know it sounds very utopian, but it's the best connection that I have to you. Growing up with just Ukoko, I've never felt like anything was missing because all of the women in my life have been whole and taught me to be whole. A part of me thanks you for leaving early. You were in a lot of pain, but another part hates the fact that you were taken away from me before I could take anything from you. Nkulu, you've inspired me to reach my dreams. If you could see me now, I'm 21, almost done with school and on the brink of starting my life. You were born in a time of darkness and you endured a lot. You were in chains way before you got out of your mother's womb in 1918, to a country that was stolen, to a country that was destroyed. A lot was happening in the country at the time with the apartheid government. And when you died, South Africa was in absolute turmoil. Two years later, the youth Soweto uprising happened Mom says they were all involved, and as a result, her best friend from down the road, Umlungu, was killed. I know he was like a son to you. They continued to fight even after you were gone. We achieved democracy in 94. You were long gone then, and Umandela eventually became president. Mkulu, I was reading some of Richard Wright's book about little black boys and their hopes and dreams. It made me think of you, your hopes, in your dreams. He wrote, because I had no power to make things happen outside of me in the objective world, I made things happen from within because my environment was bare and bleak. They told me you loved playing piano. It was your life, but because of life, you could not pursue your dreams. A man of excellence who was always the life of the party, you were intelligent, handsome, caring a whiskey lover, apparently. <laughs> Mom hates the fact that I love whiskey, but she didn't tell me that that was all your fault. You were a musician and a composer. I had this obsession with playing piano when I was younger, and when I found out you were a pianist, I cried. Ukoko told me she donated your piano to the church after you passed away, and I thought that was the biggest mistake ever. Whenever I tell my friends about you, I get excited my grandfather the pianist, but you never got a chance to live your dream or fulfill your purpose. Instead, you had to become a driver to make ends meet. Mom wanted to become an accountant after you died. She ended up becoming a nurse. Because of this country's history, you got your dreams taken away from you, and she did too. You left your kids living in a tragic condition. Ukoko told me that all of you were forcefully removed from your home and dumped into the Bantu stands in the Mlazi Township. You took the cold walls of that place, lit it up and made it a home. Your fire still burns there today. I see you in my dreams a lot, but that's where it ends because I will never have this conversation with you. That's why I thought I'd write this to you, to tell you that your grandchild is making her dreams come true, something that you could never do.